The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh, and our guest is David Bernstein, political writer at the Boston Phoenix, who's been covering Mitt Romney for years. I wanted to step back for a minute before we talk about his changing positions on immigration, David Bernstein, and Mitt Romney's changing positions, for example, on uh, health care in Massachusetts, on uh, reproductive rights. Uh, Talk about Mitt Romney's family. Um, and I think also this goes to the issue of immigration, which he's talked about. But talk about um, where Mitt Romney was born. Talk about his parents. Well, it, it really is, is two very separate stories, which, uh, you know, it's very much like a lot of us in America, where we have sort of our American story, you know, our personal story, and then the story of how we came to be here, you know, whether it's Italian immigrants or Jewish immigrants, you know, in Mitt Romney's case, it's a very fascinating story of uh, the Mormon story uh, in American history, uh, which his family is very much uh, intertwined with, uh, very central in. And uh, at some point, uh, one of his uh, direct ancestors was essentially sent down to Mexico, first sent down to Arizona uh, to start a sort of enclave where, uh, where polygamy, where multiple marriage uh, for men uh, would be allowed as uh, the American government started to really crack down on it. And talk about um, what happened in Mexico and his father's birth, uh, et cetera. I, I'm sorry. Um, uh, um, so, so his father was then born, uh, you know, his ancestor was sent down to Mexico to start this enclave. Um, to uh, where polygamy would be allowed, as it was cracked down on in, in uh, America. And then, uh, um, it, so George Romney, uh, Mitt's father, was born down there. But then uh, the family moved back into America um, as the Mormon Church uh, stepped away from, from polygamy as a, as a doctrine. Uh, so George Romney came back to America when he was five years old. So he really has a purely American life uh, and a tremendously successful life, built himself up. Uh, you know, became a, a, a big figure in business, in politics. And uh, by the time that uh, Mitt Romney was born, the youngest child of George Romney, uh, uh, George Romney was in Michigan, uh, in, uh, in a very tony suburb of uh, Michigan, on his way to becoming governor uh, of the state. Uh, and, uh, you know, very, very wealthy uh, man. He was a, the head of a major American car company there in M Michigan. Uh, so that's where, you know, Mitt comes in, is with this whole history, family history, uh, which, you know, is largely uh, separated from what you might think of as mainstream America. But then his story is very much one of privilege and, uh, and power, uh, as he was brought up in the George Romney household. Uh, George Romney, you know, he's sort of become a little bit of a footnote uh, historically, but at the time, in the 1960s, he was really thought of as one of the premier political figures, one of the most likely people to become uh, president. He was sort of the Mitt Romney of his time, in a way. David Bernstein, can you say something? You've written about this as well, about um, Romney's association with the uh, Marriott family. Uh, his work as a board member of the Marriott Corporation. And, and if, can you talk about that in light of his stance and his changing stance on immigration? Well, this is, uh, I've brought this up. I've been surprised that it hasn't been brought up uh, uh, in the campaign yet. Uh, you know, he's become very, very solid uh, right wing on this immigration issue, which he had, he had always been sort of on that side. But, you know, as governor, he never really acted on it. He was, it wasn't something he made very central to him until he really began positioning himself, uh, you know, in 2006, as he saw the opening on the right against McCain and, uh, and Giuliani. Really, the, that whole campaign attacked uh, McCain uh, specifically on immigration, because McCain, of course, had uh, sponsored uh, the bill that included amnesty for, uh, for immigrants, for undocumented aliens. Uh, and this year uh, has gone after, you know, Rick Perry and others uh, on this immigration issue and Newt Gingrich now. Um, it, what's interesting to me is that uh, he, he's very close. The family goes way back with, uh, with the Marriott family. And in fact, uh, uh, Willard Mitt Romney is named after John Willard Marriott, the founder of the company. Um, and uh, he served, Mitt served on the, on the board for a long time. Uh, and then left it for the Olympics and came back and served again. Bill Marriott, the current head of the company, 
uh, and, the, and the head of the company through this whole time, is one of the, the top business leaders uh, advocating for major immigration reform, including amnesty. Marriott, as a company, is one of the, the largest employers of immigrants in the United States. And, and Bill Marriott and others at the company have, have testified to Congress and have spoken publicly and, and advocated and spent money advocating uh, for the idea that, that they cannot personally, you know, uh, possibly verify every single person who, uh, who, who they employ everywhere throughout the country uh, as to their authenticity. And, and that's specifically what Mitt Romney is saying, is that we have to make employers pay and, and sanction employers for not doing that kind of verification. Uh, it, it really seems to me very hypocritical. You know, why did he go back to the board? Why did he serve on the board and while they were doing this kind of advocacy uh, if this is what he believed? And I think that it, it should be raised by his opponents. And the Romney family, the Marriott family, very close for a long time, both prominent Mormon families. Uh, Mormonism, something that uh, Mitt Romney is not mentioning very much on his campaign. Is that right, David? Uh, no, he does. He's not very comfortable talking about it. Uh, he uh, it, he really felt last time in, in the 2008 election, he really was trying to win over. Like I said, he was trying to run for the right uh, to the right. So he really was trying to get some of these social conservatives, Christian conservatives uh, down in the south and in Iowa. And he tried to talk to them about his Mormonism and tried to convince them that it wasn't that different from their religion. Uh, it, it really didn't take. Uh, I don't think that it's the main obstacle for him with those uh, folks. I think that, that a lot of them are just very wary of his position, is, you know, whether he's really dedicated to uh, uh, their abortion positions, for instance, or their uh, uh, gay rights uh, positions on some things and so forth, and, and now the health care issue. Uh, but it is an issue for him, and he's not comfortable talking about it. it, it it's not something that he's found a way to, to warm them over about. Uh, so he really doesn't talk about it very much, uh, it, which, you know, it's I, I don't know if I blame him for that, but uh, it is a little a little strange because it is very clearly a very major part of his life. He, you know, he's a very uh, strong man of faith and uh, was a leader in the in the church in Massachusetts uh, for many, many years. Uh, it's clearly part of his life. And before that was a Mormon missionary in France. Is that right? Absolutely. That's right. Uh, and, and, you know, his uh, his family. Uh, a very, uh, very high-level uh, uh, individuals in the in the church, uh, and uh, you know over many years, you know over generations, uh, his uh, uncle, if I'm not mistaken, was actually uh, one of the three individuals who uh, were apparently in the room when uh, when God gave the word to uh, to stop the ban on uh, on black priests back in 1978. That's how high uh, the Romneys have been in, in the church. Uh, uh, and he, he's taken it up, and he's talked about, uh, you know, about his missionary work in France and how it uh, sort of uh, solidified his faith. And he's been a, a, a very serious, uh, you know, uh, man of faith uh, ever since. Uh, on Monday morning's Fox and Friends, uh, host Steve Ducey asked Romney if he's courting the Latino community by bringing up the fact that his father was born in Mexico. Romney said he wished he could claim that he was Hispanic. Let's just go to that clip. The other night when I saw you at one of the debates down there in Florida, you mentioned for the first time in my memory that your father was born, where you were talking about that anti-immigrant allegation by Newt Gingrich. You were talking about how your father was born in Mexico. It's the first time I heard you say that. Is that helping you with the Latino community in Florida? <laughs> Uh, you know, I wish I could claim that, that, that I'm Hispanic, and that would help me in the Latino community here in Florida and around the country. But, but my dad was born of American parents living in Mexico, so um, he was uh, Anglo at the time. And, uh, uh, and yet I'm very proud of the fact that uh, he came to this country at a critical time, was, uh, was helped to get on his feet by uh, folks in this country. And uh, he and his dad uh, went around the America, started the construction business. Ultimately, uh, my dad went off and ran a car company. It's an amazing land, of course. People coming here from all over the world seeking opportunity. David Bernstein, your response to, to what Mitt Romney said. Well, he doesn't talk about that much and, and never really has. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, part of it was it, it, it was brought up, it was asked to him uh, at a, a Univision uh, forum. 
Uh, so, it, you know, it's sort of been, been put in front of him. But he really has very actively sought out uh, the Latino, particularly the Cuban-American uh, vote there in Florida, which tends to vote Republican. It was a big part of the Republican uh, primary vote, and which apparently he did very, very well in. Uh, last night. So, uh, it, you know, it's not exactly making himself out to be, you know, an immigrant because, uh, uh, as he was explaining, uh, they were Americans living in uh, uh, Mexico at the time, his, uh, his family, uh, and were never really immigrants back into the country. Right. If you're born of American parents, wherever you're born, you're still an American citizen. Uh, uh, yeah, and but I think what's interesting about it, and, and why I think you will hear him talk more about uh, George Romney, his father, and those, you know, as he describes it, traveling the country and you know making himself uh, into a, a self-made man, uh, is because uh, Mitt Romney has this real problem that he doesn't have that kind of uh, story to tell to create an empathy with his with the voters. You know, he, he doesn't have the 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 tough times that he went through or the, you know, I, I grew up the, you know, the son of a steel worker, you know, mill worker or whatever it might be. He just doesn't have that. He he is a success story. Uh, no question about that, and he will talk about his successes, but he, he doesn't have a story. And so he has tended at times, uh, like he did there, to tell his father's story as if sort of it's part of him, I, I think that it's, it's his way of sort of trying to get ordinary people to think of him as someone who can relate to them, uh, where obviously he has a very big image problem uh, of people thinking of him as a very wealthy person who has always been wealthy and powerful, who can't relate to their specific uh, uh, you know, and this, this has come up again and again. David you know, Bernstein, I wanted to so I wanted to switch issues for a minute uh, to talk about his views on reproductive rights. Last January, I had a chance to speak with Salt Lake City Mayor Rocky Anderson, the former mayor, about the political record of Mitt Romney. The two became friends when they worked together on the 2002 Winter, Olympic, Winter Olympics, um, <clears throat> and they had cross endorsed each other. Although Romney is a Republican, and Rocky Anderson at the time was a Democrat, now he's an independent running for president as well. But let me go to what Rocky Anderson had to say. Well, I think the real Mitt Romney, the Mitt Romney we all knew and who served as, as governor of Massachusetts, was very reasonable, very moderate. He th felt that Roe versus Wade should be the end of the, the debate on choice, supporter of stem cell research. Uh, he was not the right winger that he seemed to be when he decided that he would run for president of the United States. And frankly, I'd like to see the old Mitt Romney come back, because uh, I think that he's the sort of person that could bring people together and not be so fiercely partisan. When did he change? The day that he decided to run for president of the United States. That was former Salt Lake City Mayor Rocky Anderson, now also running for president. Uh, David Bernstein, if you could talk about uh, Mitt Romney's uh, changing position on choice. Rocky Anderson, who knew him personally, said he was absolutely pro-choice. Well, he, he, you know, the, the big question that people ask is, did he, uh, did he become, is he really pro-choice and became pro-life to run for president, or is he really pro-life and became pro-choice uh, when he was running in Massachusetts? It's a great question. He, he certainly, uh, his history uh, that we know of uh, from the Mormon church when he, when he was a leader there uh, earlier in his life, uh, very strict uh, uh, against abortion, uh, certainly, you know, carrying out the church dictates at the time. When he started getting interested in running for elected office uh, in the early 1990s, he became very active in the pro-choice uh, movement, frankly. He, he and his wife uh, gave money to Planned Parenthood, went to Planned Parenthood events, uh, were, were uh, positioning themselves. Uh, it has been reported that they had polling, which I, I really don't doubt, uh, that they had polling showing that nobody who is uh, uh, anti-choice on this issue could win a statewide election in Massachusetts. Uh, so he made clear that he was, uh, that he was pro-choice, effectively. He didn't use that word, uh, but he made clear that he was effectively pro-choice back in the early 1990s and when he ran, ran against Ted Kennedy for Senate. Uh, when he was uh, in uh, Utah for those Olympic Games, uh, he said some things to the press out there when he was uh, 
considering at the time possibly running for office in Utah, which is very pro, very pro life uh, state. Uh, he said some things uh, that, that made it sound like he was pro life. Then, when he decided to run for governor, he was very adamant about uh, the fact that he would respect Roe versus Wade, that he personally respected Roe versus Wade, that even though he was opposed to uh, abortion personally, which, you know, I'm not sure who. <laughs> who isn't, uh, that, that he wouldn't uh, do anything to, uh, to affect uh, a woman's uh, right and access. Uh, but then later, uh, towards the end of his uh, gubernatorial run, he changed on that, then began positioning himself stronger and stronger to the right uh, as he geared up for the presidential run. He points to, uh, he says that there was a sort of a conversion moment. Uh, that took place, I believe, in uh, late 2004, early 2005, when he was meeting with a doctor, you know, a scientist about something. Uh, but it doesn't square up with his actions and, and, uh, and rhetoric even for another year or two after that point. He, he sort of created that backstory of a conversion experience. You can believe it or, or not believe it, but it doesn't quite fit. But he's certainly been very solidly uh, on the pro-life side since then. David Bernstein, finally, uh, on the question of health care, I want to turn to Mitt Romney's victory speech last night in Tampa, Florida, where once again he criticized what he called Obamacare. On one of the most personal matters of our lives, our health care, President Obama would turn decision making over to government bureaucrats. He forced through Obamacare, and I will repeal it. Uh, David Bernstein, your response. How much of what he refers to as Obamacare is, in fact, based on Romney care? Oh, the, the basic system is entirely taken from, uh, from what he did. Uh, you know, he, he put uh, this system in place. It was a very creative system. They worked on it for a long time. A lot of different, you know, people at the table, left and right. Uh, a lot of compromises, a lot of innovative thinking. Uh, this was this, this idea of the connector, which basically uh, allows individuals to purchase uh, health care through a, a system that pools them together so they can get uh, competitive rates and so forth. Um, that was all, you know, came out of uh, a Heritage Foundation, Conservative Foundation, uh, which is why uh, Mitt Romney liked it. He pushed it. Uh, that was his uh, his baby. <laughs> Got it passed. Uh, and David and Bernstein, then... we just have 10 seconds. How is it working in Massachusetts? Although uh, oh. Mitt Romney seems to be very much running away from it right now, and it's what New Gingrich is slamming away on, and many of the Republicans are. It's it's. There's a great deal of myth being being told. This the system basically works. They need to work on the cost containment side of it, which they're trying to do right now. But it's working very well. Uh, we have everyone covered, uh, and and it's working uh, essentially exactly how it's supposed to. Uh, and and it really is exactly the model for what uh, we're trying to do uh, across the country. And the way that he's talking about it is is really very duplicitous, in my opinion. Well, we're going to leave it there. David Bernstein, we thank you very much for being with us. He's written many articles on Mitt Romney, political writer at the Boston Phoenix. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.